Welcome back to the Armenia River channel and my playthrough of Pillars of Eternity. Rough the voice and meowing cats excluded, hopefully. <clears throat> well, rough the voice more than likely. She is back as if looking back at the sky, but her eyes are closed, the film building on them. With a slow intake of breath, you feel time become quiet around you. I do not feel the memory. I do not know if it is mine, but her hair falls across her features again like a veil and she nods, not with her chin, but a push in her mind. But you are, uh, thank you, you are, but thank you for trying. I want to talk about the birth memory again. Help you recall it. There is a silence, and as your breath falls fall still, you hear the faint cry of a child in distance. Tell me what you saw. Show me what you saw. Where were you? Come on. Tell me what you saw. Sh if she kneels before you on the ground, she whispers to you hoarsely, and even fainter with the distance between you. Stone of the plateau. Its color. Tell me its color. It was silver adra, its surface warmed by the sun. As you watch her hands rise before you, she claps them. She claps them, not slaps them. Then cups them as if feeling them for the first time, and she stares down in the cradle of her hands, and the chimes sound once, twice, as if as they swing with the movement. And what did these hands hold? The same chimes you hold now. She leans back as if oh, looking back at the sky, but her eyes are closed, the film building on them. Okay, so this is basically a... Tell me what you saw. The stone of the plateau. And what did these hands hold? Okay, this is kind Tell of me what you saw. The stone of the plant. And what did these I'm hands I'm not sure. Hold? There was a child moving forth in your hands. I don't recall. There's a sudden intake of breath and then a release. Her eyes blur. Closed, forming into slits. Huh? But in the brief glimpse you have of her changing expression, the rippling pain in her features seems to have smoothed. She swallows once, twice. And then you feel her once again in your thoughts, the rasping husk of her voice swallowed and drawn within her. It was the birthing bell you saw. They're surprised. Has it been so long? Have I forgotten so much? Followed by a rising horror swelling beneath the words. With the words comes a river of impulses, thoughts as if loosed from a breaking dam in your mind. Wraps the impulses into words. You realize it is her muscles and her arm thoughts relaxing and breathing again. There is such an intensity you almost want to step back from the flow, but you find the wave of impulses cause questions to flow to the surface. Among them is a name. Watcher. What is the birthing bell? It is a plateau formed of the spirit stone Audra. At its top is set a great bell cradled in the reaching arm of the plateau. It stirs in the wind, and it sounds for leagues when struck by kith hands. In distant times, the great bell served as a Glanfothan watchtower, perhaps. Why they abandoned it, I do not know. Other men came in time, settlers, and claimed the tower as their own. I, in turn, claimed it from them. The pillar became a cradle where I could draw new souls into the world. In your memory, were you helping a woman give birth? Yes. Yet, I believe you only saw a small part of the birthing ritual. It is not all in a moment, nor in a day. It is a journey of many years between the child, the mother, and I. 
There was much I could do to aid the mother. Some sought the physical comforts of a ritual to stay their thoughts, even Andra from the bell. Others would seek advice, words of counsel for the days ahead. I was able to provide draughts, tinctures, and reading of the child's spirit all to strengthen the mother. Can you tell me about the birthing ritual? The ritual was one of many steps. It took many tens of years to carve them, but always the child's thoughts were there to guide me. From the moment it began to awaken to the three seasons within the mother, to the birthing day, and the years to follow, the child's thoughts, that is where it began. The expectant mother, I could often sense her thoughts and those of her child before she could. I would soothe her, free her from the panic of questions. I would sound the memory of the birthing bell atop the plateau in her mind, letting the memory of the vibrations fill my thoughts and hers. Often, the child's soul could hear it too. So the sound of the bell echoed in the mother's thoughts. Sense the mother's thoughts? Sharing memories and thoughts can bond lives together, as can hardships, and most of all, the sharing of what is familiar. The bell itself provided shelter for such thoughts, opportunities to see deep in the crevice, hollows in the rock where one could find shelter, clefts where you could feel the Adra all around you. As she speaks, you feel your legs bent, crossed, and the warmth of walls around you, and blankets woven thick beneath you. Such shared images can bond souls even tighter, and allow them to draw strength from each other. You mentioned the ritual lasted years. What would happen after the birth? Once the pain is channeled away, the mother and the child breathe again. I sound the birthing bells on my wrists and allow the mother to hear the child's thoughts, the ringing echoes in each other's thoughts. The bells open the way between them, let her feelings pass in the newborn and let her feel the child in return. And when the feelings meet, that is when I weave another memory and leave it tied in their minds. Did these bells play an important role in the birthing process? Yes, and for years after, I gave a set to the child after delivery. It's a reminder of the memory the mother and child shared. You feel an odd sensation, a warmth. And you can feel a smile being shared, then it flickers, and it is gone. As the bells coax the child forth, so they accompany the child onwards, asking about the wrists, to care for them in mind and body. There is no magic in it except the magic of practicality. If a child sought to leave their cradles or escape their cribs, the mother could know through the wording of the chants alone. At times, if the bond was strong, so would I. The sensation of a smile comes again, slower, more knowing between you. If not watch, children much trouble if not watch children, much trouble may be had from tiny hands. English. The chimes are kept until a child needs them no longer. When I no longer can hear them sounding in my mind, I know their spirit has changed and the bonds we shared are long gone. This shedding may last many years, or but a few, but it is necessary. You watched over these organ donors, both collector and donor, and the same sound too. Uh, you watched over these children for years after their birth. Children are fragile things, even the ties of blood and mind may not be enough, they must be watched, and even, even then the body may fail the mind, but if watched, even the most sickly child may Cling to life was determined enough, and many of their souls were tied to me. If a child's spirit failed, I could sound the chimes in their mind and grant them strength, even from afar. It, it did not always serve, but it gave hope. Sounds like you've seen tragedy too. Enough to never wish to feel it again. In the times before the bell, children who died were cast upon the waters of the lake beyond the bell. Sometimes while alive, their paths and futures were deemed weak. It was a different time. Children were treated carelessly. <clears throat> those times, those times are past. If other questions about the birthing bell, why would you give a telling of a child's spirit? Many would come seeking their <clears throat> child's future or a reading into the child's past, the lives its soul is said to have lived. 
There's a slow chill, and for a moment, it seems as if she's going to fade from your vision, as if she can bear to be seen. And there's a spike of fear, alarm. Such things are not mine to see. I meant no offense. Oddly enough, it feels like she's not speaking to you. It feels like she's speaking to an audience. The air takes on a curious edge, a chill, which persists for a sharp moment, then fades. Okay. You're frightening, frightened, something about watchers. As though the thought of watchers crosses your mind, you feel a sharp pain, stabbing, and a sudden burn of lashes across your back and shoulder. And then it is gone, and you feel the grieving mother before you, silent, almost fearful, wary. I was something else, but because the title Watcher was cast on me, the word carried a weight I had neither earned nor deserved. The world seems filled with such titles. They distract, I think, from the actions of the person, from their strengths. But if they came to you to read their own... Why did they believe you were a watcher? The world has many corners, and in some corners the name Watcher is more known. It is an easier title than others, and at times it is easier to wear. Placing a title upon what is unknown can dispel the fear of it, and I did not fight it. I even believed it true, though I knew little of the ways of Watchers. It even granted me strength. Hmm. I was able to see the thoughts of others, shape them and help guide souls. Watcher seemed enough, and the name seemed to matter little in the light of one's acts. But if they came to, to you to read their child's souls, what did you do? What did you tell them? I drew upon the present. I felt the soul of the mother before me, and used that to tell the child's path, to give it a voice. If only the thoughts of the mother and the emotions that lie beneath were mine to impart. I did, and so I used that as the telling of their child's future. What if it turned out to be untrue? And what if the mother's emotions were painful, hurtful? Futures fulfilled by one's own spirit are as strong as anything seen by another's eyes. And if one draws from the emotion of the mother, it matters only when harm is done. And their lives I knew well. I could weave their lives, their thoughts over time, to the mother, to the child, and once the child had been born, was sheltered, I could relax the threads of thought until the child could stand on its own. So you shaped their thoughts, made the readings true. This is my calling, to show them the life I see before them, and even greater, make them believe it. That is not what the Watcher does. We do not shape minds, we see them as they are. Even the most strongly worded tells may not be enough to save a child and allow it to be born. If I have the strength to strip away the stem of a mother's spite to expose kindness, weave nurturing from disdain and neglect, then that is my calling. And with the weight of Watcher behind my thoughts, these tells gain strength. Strength I never possessed on my own. They believed. And what they believed became the truth. With each child that was set upon that path, the title of Watcher became stronger. You must understand, without such weight upon my words, many lives would have been lost, drowned, cast in the lake beyond the bell. Now the trail to the lake is lost and reclaimed by the forest, as was meant. A Watcher was not there to look over us, but it was a Watcher that saved them, and with a Watcher's strength, children were born, were cared for, and grew strong. To inflict your will on another, that is not reading, that is control. What use is a frightened will when a spirit is at stake? Would you let the fears of a mother end her newborn's life? You felt it in the memory, the weight of it, the importance of the child's life. It was a memory we shared. Did we share a memory or did you inflict it on me? That memory, it's not the truth. And suddenly there is a rasping cry across your consciousness. She raises her hands, and you see the chains draped from them. Yet they make no sound as she moves. A greater good was done, and children were saved. It is a choice you may be forced to make one day. And when faced with it, you will make the same one. 
and refused to exercise that kind of control over others, even for greater good. This choice is not yours to make, Watcher. You will do as the world needs, as its children need. It is greater than you and your twist of sight. That was way too fucked up. Way, way too fucked up. Okay. Mm. Nah. I'll deal with that guy later. If nobody interesting comes up, up in the White March expansion areas. If they do, jolly well fuck. Now, let me just see. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do these. Well, this one at least. Or actually, I could leave those for later and just see what the bloody wall takes to actually get. Further on. So, CJ crack hold. That's the next stop, because I don't imagine anything else possibly being linked to the whole... Uh, you sucking our souls out, mate, dudes. Gelade, well done. A formidable. Ready when you are. Hey. Ready, Watcher. Yeah? Ready, Watcher. Following your lead. I'm ready. Ready when you are. Okay. That should make me a wee bit more capable of resisting shit. Not a problem. Crack hole bluffs. Let's see if they can actually bloody well stop me. This time around at least. I doubt it. What is it with these supplicants? I wonder if I can actually beat any of them in here. It's been like three to four levels, I think. So possibly. You had your chance. Huh! 
Somehow she fell over. You better. Uh, members uh, did not appreciate my presence in their camp. I was forced to defend myself from their aggression. Very strong, not strong. Very. Not a problem. Hey, ready when you are. Let's see now. Not a problem. Yeah, these guys are much stronger than I am. I wonder when I'm supposed to even do this. Because these guys, yeah. <laughs> Just being able to go like, okay, you guys can get the fuck out of near me. <laughs> that in and of itself was like, what the fuck? Okay. Following your lead. Before going out. I'll just nick that. I can do that. Wait, what? Yeah. Just say the word. Still well beyond me in level terms. I'm gonna head back to Cadnua, rest up, get more athletics and whatnot. And then head to White March. Because there, at least, I know the ogres weren't that bad. Not as beautiful as the Anguithin ruins near my home, but your fortress is impressive in its own little way. I swear to God, I'm gonna shoot you in the testicles. Cut off for the moment. Has to be something in here I'm missing. Let me just. Oh no. Oh, I think I know what it is. Where was that? Steering falls. It's possibly linked to this. Possibly. Because I can't imagine any other place I haven't totally... I'm gonna say tapped out for interesting things. Let's see if I can actually handle the drakes now. Big if. But who knows. Yeah, 
Yeah, it looks a wee bit bad. Damage reduction. Oh yeah, this is much better. Significantly fair. Near death, barely injured. Near death. Another one down. You're mine. Step to. Oh yeah. You filthy Drake skin. Go rest in pieces somewhere else. Now let me just go and see about Not a problem. Hmm. Another one. Grave. You bet. Hey. Speaking of which, do they have any pistols? I should have some pistols or some. Nice in that sense. Yeah, I do. Always have an option, you know. Ready when you are. I think, yeah, that's this place cleared. I'm gonna go dive in the. Oof. Okay, system and check. I'm also gonna go scout mode. Just to make sure I didn't miss anything. On the hunt. I thought I did, but who knows? Wait, I didn't kill you guys? Shit. 
sure, why not? No, the Drake Rolls, you can't steal with your cold, dirty paws, I shall protect it. Why did I ki not kill this guy, I wonder? Drake, thou lost your lead. Turn around. Position. Heal that My bow's ready. The owl's Looks like I'm gonna die. Consider it dead. I'm almost sure I killed this guy. Got an arrow for this one. Yeah? Death to our enemy! Just say the word. to that. Not a problem. Ready when you are. But that's it for now, ladies and gentlemen, because we are at 35 minutes, so yeah.
but hey, no cat interruption, so yeah. Thank you for watching, or more precisely surviving up until this point, because guys know the editing's kind of interesting and my voice has a melodic tone to it. If you like what you saw, feel free to hit the subscribe button, like button, it does help out the statistics of the channel, gets more visible, you know, stuff like that. And to be honest, at one point I would like to actually make this a job so I can do better content with better quality, more games, more coverage, you know, stuff like that. Take care.